are watching our special show Change Agents and we're coming to you from the India Economic Summit which is playing host to the 5th India Social Entrepreneur of the Year Awards handed out by the Schwab Foundation in association with the UNDP. Just before the break, you met one of the winners, Bridge Kotari. It's now time for us to profile the second winner this evening. Rajendra Joshi started his NGO South in 1989 to alleviate the problems faced by the urban poor. So whether it's healthcare, education, employment, infrastructure or microfinance, South works on all of these areas. He's already touched the lives of 50,000 urban poor. Here's the story of Rajendra Joshi. Rajendra Joshi found his true calling quite by chance. A medical representative by training with an ambition to teach, he got an opportunity to work with a missionary in the slums of Ahmedabad. The marginal status of the urban poor and the lack of basic amenities in these slums moved Rajendra to turn social entrepreneur. So began South in 1989, a mission to provide access to healthcare, education, microfinance and employment opportunities to the urban underprivileged. In the last 20 years, South has managed to touch the lives of more than 50,000 slum dwellers in Ahmedabad. The approach that we took right from the beginning was integrated slum development with the belief that if you really want change to happen with the urban poor, you have to look at all aspects of their life. So that would mean health, education, livelihoods, access to credit, basic services, housing, and I would say most important is how they change their own self-image. You know, not looking the, at themselves as people who are poor and who need help, but people who can really do as well as anybody else. So the verticals in South uh, are really, we have a livelihoods initiative, we have microcredit initiative, we do physical upgradation in slums, we do livelihood training. The other understanding right from the beginning is that if we want to really have an impact, we would have to partner and partner especially with the government and in the case of Ahmedabad with the Ahmedabad Municipal Corporation. In that sense, I think we were a little bit different from uh, other NGOs because normally NGOs and the government have an adversarial relationship. But we knew that if we wanted to leverage the resources which were there with the government, we had to work with them. Working with the state governments of Gujarat and Rajasthan, Rajendra runs two livelihood programs, Urmila and Umid. Urmila focuses on women dwelling in slums. As part of the program, the Urmila team trains these women to do household jobs to become home managers. Trained for a period of 35 days in housekeeping, child care and first aid, these women undergo medical checkups and are verified by the police before they start work. Umid, on the other hand, mentors college dropouts and youth from slums for mainstream jobs. Through 44 centers spread across Gujarat and Rajasthan, Umid trains these students in computers, English and service skills to help build careers. The first avatar of Umid was Udan, in which we said that, okay, let's have a three-month training program, which has four components in it. The first one would be a market uh, skill, yeah, that could be, you know, in the retail sector, it could be in the automotive sector, hospitality, IT, it could be your bedside patient assistance. The second one was common for all the participants, which would be basic spoken English. The third one was computer awareness. Yeah, because today we realize that any job you do, there is a computer somewhere. And we didn't want this, uh, you know, young people to be scared of what is going to happen over there. And the fourth component, probably the most important, was life skills. Yeah, now life skills is important because the environment in which this youth have lived and grown up is very different from the environment in which they are going to work. <laughs> South is supported by international private agencies like American Indian Foundation and the government bodies like the Municipal Corporation of Ahmedabad. Rajendra has also managed to bring on board corporate partners like Airtel, McDonald's and Cafe Coffee Day. So far more than 30,000 students from the slums have been placed with partner companies. In the next three years Rajendra hopes to train at least one lakh more students. We are in the process of getting the infrastructure into place. We are finding that more and more Indian philanthropic organizations are coming up. But I think the larger requirement 
is in the sustainable business models for the base of the pyramid as a social entrepreneur i would like to talk about that we are really getting equity getting debt getting faith in those business models is uh, still something that we are looking for i would also like to say that at saap we have a remarkable group of people none of them are champions none of them are superstars it's really ordinary people who have come together and have done amazing things and uh, you know that reinforces my belief that it is really ordinary people who can do extraordinary things if the right environment is provided the right kind of support is provided and the right strategies are developed then amazing things can be done in this sector congratulations rajendra joshi and sir